Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup. This week in top news, we kind of have a little bit of a theme going in that a lot of brands are trying to think of new ways to make their brands better, make their communities better. And we're going to start with Give by Gwen Stefani and how she's rethinking community and how you might be able to earn some money because of how she's rethinking community. It's very interesting. Then we're gonna talk about e.l.f. Cosmetics and how they're going further than cruelty-free in order to make a difference. And it's pretty amazing. And then in the product report, of course, there are tons of products that launched this week, but the first product we're talking about is from Hip Dot, And they have the most unlikely collab that I, I thought that cup noodles was different. This is really different. And the level of beauty they have taken this collab lab to is just it's a whole nother thing that I didn't even know hip dot could do and I can't wait to share it with you hang tight we're about to get into it right now Before we get started with top news, I want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's episode, which is Teamy. Hello, a friend. Welcome back to my bathroom. As you probably very well know, I am an ingredient geek when it comes to skincare and makeup. I love to learn about ingredients and find out the ones that are best for not just my skin, but other people's skin as well. So when Teamy reached out to sponsor some of my videos, I was very excited because I have been a fan of Teamy skincare for years because it's so freaking frustrating when you invest your hard-earned money in a skincare product and then you learn that the ingredients do not match what they say it's going to do but more importantly it doesn't do the thing that you bought it to do so that's why I partnered with Teamy because they genuinely have fantastic skincare products one ingredient that you always hear me raving about and also other skin influencers and dermatologists on YouTube is vitamin C the reason why I love vitamin C is it's an excellent pairing for my sunscreen in that it helps to fight UV damage. It also can help fight the early signs of aging. It can help with dark spots and brightening the skin. And there's also some research that it can help with acne prone skin. One of the reasons why I love their particular vitamin C is because it has ascorbic acid, which is one of the most research-based vitamin Cs that there are on the market. The experience using this is so nice. It has like a light, crisp, slightly floral, but more citrusy kind of scent to it. It absorbs into the skin very, very quickly and nicely. There's no stickiness factor. It's just a really nice, legit vitamin C serum. The other product that I'm highlighting today from Teamy is their detox mask. And this is specifically meant for people with oily slash acne prone skin. According to the brand, the best way to use this is to splash or clean face with water and then put the clay mask over it because what's going to happen is that the humectants within this product are going to encourage your skin to absorb that water which is great for acne and oily prone skin the magic happens though with the bentonite clay and the kaolin clay that's what's going to absorb your excess oil and clean out all the gunk that's in your pores but what's special about this mask compared to some other masks is it also has moisturizing ingredients in here because if you've ever used a clay mask before you've probably had one that strips the skin and makes your skin feel really tight which is super counterproductive for oily prone skin because then your skin's like dude my skin is so dry I need to produce more oil which is very very bad so the moisturizing ingredients in here help your skin to be balanced after the mask comes off so that you don't have that excess oil production which is fabulous darling if you are interested in trying either of these products or anything on the teamy website that you think will be good for your personal skin teamy was kind enough to give me a 20 percent off discount code it is gen love i do not make any kickback off of that my teamy deal is done it's just a bonus for you in case you would like to try the products thank you again to teamy so much for sponsoring this video i appreciate you and now it is time for What's Up In Makeup. 
All right, let's start with Give by Gwen Stefani. And I really love this story because it's different. Gwen and her team have launched the Give community. When speaking about the community, Gwen said, quote, I've dreamed about the day of launching the Give community and now it's here. I wanted to partner up with the people who have been my partners all along. We've always had this exchange of love, whether it be through music I've written or fashion and now beauty. If you love makeup and you love to be your own individual, you're going to love this community and I can't wait to see what everyone creates. So what is it? It is a new digital platform where you can share your looks and be part of a community, but also you may be able to earn money. There is an ambassador program attached and they are called the Givers. And what this gives you if you become part of the Giver community is you get exclusive access to videos from Gwen Stefani, as well as product education, application tutorials, social content, product images, and the ability to share and engage in brand polls and chats. But Givers also also receive a 30% commission, which is very high. I've been doing this for a long time and 30% is definitely at the higher range for commissions. I honestly, I can't think of maybe but one brand that I've ever earned 30% commission on. And anybody can apply for the Give community. So I will link down below the ambassador program link, or you can go to the givebeauty.com website to find out more. I've created a lot of content here on this channel about cruelty-free cosmetics, what it means and what it doesn't mean. And it's interesting to see that every time I do a video about that topic, there are people that are surprised that cruelty-free cosmetics can have animals in them. They can have animal products. They can have carmine, which is the type of bug. Cruelty-free only means that it is not tested on animals before it is sent to market. And a lot of people make the point in my comment section about how can something be cruelty free if it harms the people that create the product? Maybe there's terrible working conditions or maybe it's harmful for the environment. Well, e.l.f. has now become the first mass market beauty brand to have one of their suppliers become fair trade certified. Now, this is not the entire brand. It's just going to be specific products that are made in this one place. So some of the products are their glossy lip stain, the camo CC cream, the putty primer, and the cleansing balm. This also includes products from Well People and also Keys Soul Care Select products. I always link in the video description the article where I get the information. So there's a little more specifics in there about which products are fair trade, but I would imagine Elf's going to have some kind of little sticker or something that says which ones are fair trade. So you know when you go into the store. According to their website, in order for suppliers to qualify for fair trade certification, they have to adhere to over 100 compliance criteria that cover social responsibility, environmental responsibility, empowerment, and economic development. They cite specifically safe working conditions, sustainable livelihoods, and aspects of environmental protection. And this I found very interesting. So if you are fair trade certified, you actually have to pay extra fees. And those fees go to the communities where the ingredients are sourced. So it may go toward clean water, education, housing, or healthcare in those specific communities. Elf is saying that they are looking to get some of their other manufacturing facilities to become fair trade certified. It's just a process. So they have one down and they're looking to do more. It's also important to note that they are also a vegan brand and a cruelty-free brand. I'm personally really excited about this. I hope more brands go this route. I think that it is so important to go beyond just the words that we see. You know, we care about people and yeah, Yaddy, 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 yaddy. But actually putting your money where your mouth is and trying to do something to help people while you're creating products. I think it's fantastic. A quick update on Revlon. I'm keeping you updated on the saga. If something happens, I'll let you know the update. So if you had not heard before this, Revlon declared bankruptcy. They owe billions of dollars. They just took out more billions of dollars in loans trying to rebuild the brand. I mean, it's just a freaking mess over at Revlon right now, for lack of a better term. I feel like that fits perfectly. But one of the things that was weighing them down was they had this lease in New York City. It's a $46,000 
1,000 square foot spot at 200 Park Avenue South. It's the home of the Elizabeth Arden offices, as well as a salon and retail space. And essentially, the next year, they're going to be paying $17 million to continue to lease it. And a judge said, you can get out of your lease. You're fine. So instead of digging the hole deeper, they're, you know, the judge put a little more dirt in the hole so maybe they can like climb out of it just a little bit more. I mean, $17 million is still $17 million, but they owe billions of dollars. I guess it's better than nothing. So this is definitely not enough to save Revline, but at least it's something. Time will tell. We will see. I'll keep you posted. This next story, I thought it was something when I read the headline, and then I realized that it was not that thing. If you didn't know, Kim Kardashian has a lawsuit going on right now with a company called Skin. It's a trademark lawsuit. It's kind of a mess. But Kim started a new company, and it's called Sky, S-K-K-Y. And I thought that maybe Skin was rebranding to Sky. Oh, but no. Kim Kardashian is just getting richer. <laughs> That's all that's happening. She's probably going to get very much richer. She launched a new private equity firm and it is in partnership with a man named Jay Sammons. He's the former head of the multinational investment group, the Carlyle Group. And if you're not up with financial terms, like I'm not up with financial terms, essentially what they do is they have a buttload of money and they see a brand that they think could use a buttload of money and they say, your brand looks pretty awesome. Let me give you some money so that you can grow faster and bigger and in return, I get a percent of your profits. So that's what they're planning on doing. According to the post on Kim's Instagram, Sky Partners will focus on investing in business across sectors, including consumer products, luxury, and digital commerce and media. The day-to-day -day operations are going to be handled by Jay, but Kim is listed as a co-founder and a co-managing partner with the hopes of building the next generation consumer and media private equity firm. Also involved is Kris Jenner. She is going to be involved as well. So, I mean, this is the thing. As part of the article, it was saying how few women are involved in these kinds of groups. So yay for women doing amazing things. I mean, I like I've said multiple times, I don't care either way about the Kardashians. I don't have any extremely positive or extremely negative feelings. For me, I just, I'm excited to see women in the spaces that are traditionally held by men. So I wish her nothing but the best. I hope that she finds some excellent companies to invest in so that we can experience these companies and maybe find some new favorites. Speaking of potentially new favorites, are you Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio fans? Based on my analytics of my, you know, younger audience, chances are... <laughs> 95% of you probably aren't, but that's okay. We're going to talk about them anyway because they're making big moves. They just booked their second season on Hulu of the D'Amelio show. They did all of the marketing stuff for Morphe's Morphe 2 brand. Dixie did a collab with Puma. Charlie did a fragrance. I mean, they've just been doing all of these collabs, but it seems it is time for them to start a company of their own. They've received a reported $6 million in financing for D'Amelio Brands. Uh, it is going to be run by their father. They're not running it. Their father is the business dude in the family. Plans are in the works for a footwear line as well as a skincare line. Both are reported to be coming out by the end of 2022. Like these app apparently have been in the works for a long time because they're about to launch. So keep an eye out for it. When that skincare line comes out, I guarantee you I'm going to have an opinion. It seems it is the end of an era. You know, when you're a kid, you don't realize that the things that are really popular and important in your life may one day become archaic and completely unused. And your kids look at you and they go, Ma, what is that? I've never seen that before. <laughs> you know, like like VHS tapes and Trapper Keepers and hyper-colored t-shirts and corded phones. There are things that you think are going to be popular and be in use forever that just no longer are there. One thing I never would have seen coming back in the day is the end of magazines, print magazines. It seems that Allure is going to discontinue their print magazine. They're going to be digital only. According to a report published by Fashionista, Condé Nast has announced that it will cease to publish and print the print version of Allure magazine starting in December. Or I guess that means they're going to do December and then January. They're going to stop there. Allure's editor-in-chief said that the change will affect only two jobs, and this will help them to be able to sink more resources into their brick-and-mortar store that's 
is located in New York. So I wish Allure all the best. I mean, honestly, I don't remember the last time I bought a magazine and I used to buy lots of magazines. I mean, they're freaking terrible for the environment. I get some people want to hold a physical thing, but I feel like magazines being published so often and they, I imagine most of them get thrown away without even being read. So personally, I'm not sad about seeing magazines start to go out. Do you buy physical magazines? When was the last time you did? I would love to know your thoughts on this down in the comments. All right, my friend, let's move on to the product report because this, this, HipDot has done some of the weirdest collabs I've ever seen, but this one, I wouldn't say that it's weird. It's just different. And wait till you see these products. This is the Hip Dot and Critical Role collab. If you're not familiar with Critical Role, I know I'd heard of it somewhere, but I've never seen it. I believe it started as a podcast with a bunch of voice actors playing Dungeons and Dragons, essentially. But then they turned it into a Netflix show, and apparently it is very, very good. The collab is available for pre-order now. It is so important that you know if you're planning on ordering this that it's not supposed to ship until, like, December, January. So you may not even get this before the holiday season. So it's only available as a box set for 86 bucks. When I first saw this, I immediately thought this looked like Shantakai, but make it Dungeons and Dragons. Check it out. Here it is. There is a pigment palette, a lipstick set of three, and a highlighter. And it, like, it just blows me away how much they put into this. I can see why it's a little more expensive than other products. Like I can't imagine how much this costs to produce. I'm very excited to show you the next product. We're going to be showing it a little more in PR purchased product of the week. Chippo Gray, who I had featured as an artist of the week not that long ago, she was kind enough to contact me on Instagram and ask me if I wanted to have this palette. She just did this collab with Unearthly Cosmetics and it is so freaking gorgeous. It is $40. It just launched this week. It's available now. I am wearing it on my eyes today. In just a minute, I'll show you some swatches and we'll talk a little bit more about the performance of this, but congratulations congratulations to Chippo Gray and thank you so so much for sending this over. Another product that is on the way but is not here yet is the Rich Luxe and Spoiled Cosmetics palette. It is $38. It has eight full-size shades and then there's one split pan in the middle that has two shades and Rich said he wanted to send it over to me so it is on the way. I'll let you know how it is. But who I am not hooked up with is Kylie Cosmetics. And this actually looks like a really cute collection. This is the Kylie Cosmetics and Kris Jenner round two, and it is dirty martini themed. So adorable. It's launching on September 14th. There's a lip serum, the some under eye patches, a pressed powder palette, matte lip crayon set, and a blush and highlighter cheek duo. And then we have the first of two Disney collabs that we're talking about this week. We have the Bessemer and Disney Villain made for mayhem collection. So the way they've set this up is there's three different collections. There's the Queen, Ursula, and Maleficent collections, and everything kind of fits into there. So the lipsticks are $30 each, the nail polish are $20 each. There's the Queen eyeshadow book, or just shadow book, I believe. It's $115, and this is a special edition shadow palette uh, that is a recreation of the spell book used by the Queen in Snow White and Seven Dwarves. But if you want to go super bougie bouge and and you are a big fan. We have the Metal Compact for $225. They're only making 2,000 of these. They are custom cast and sculpted. It is made in the exact shape of Ursula's necklace where she captures Ariel's voice. It's gold plated and finished with five large Swarovski crystals and that's why it's so expensive. The Metal Compact is refillable with a Besame powder, but of course it does come with its own powder. And then Maleficent's ring. It is a hundred $129, but it is not just a ring. It holds a solid perfume inside. It is a custom cast replica of the ring worn by the evil fairy in the original Sleeping Beauty. It's constructed with gold plated solid stainless steel and it features a large onyx stone on the face, but it only comes in size 10. So hopefully that fits you if you're interested. Moving over to Sephora, the Natasha Denona My Dream Collection has launched. The eyeshadow palette is $69. They say it is inspired by the elements of life that illuminate and intensify Natasha's creative vision. There are shades like Carpe Diem, Risk, Instinct, and Vision. 
really, really pretty color story here. Like, I don't know how Natasha Denona does it, where I look at her color stories and go, that's not boring. It's rare that I think that. There's also a cheek trio. It comes with a cream blush, a glow cream base, and a glow powder highlighter. That's $48, also super beautiful. And then I'm not really sure what's happening with this. There's a lip gloss and a lipstick. Those are $27 each, and then a lip liner for $24. Everything says that it's not sold out except for the lip product. So sometimes on Sephora's website, it'll list something as sold out when it just hasn't launched yet. So I don't know if these did launch and then they just sold out or if they're coming soon, but I'm sure they'll restock. They're not there. That's the point. They're not there, but hopefully they'll be restocked soon or stocked for the first time. I don't know. This next product I didn't think was new, but it is new. I got confused with a different product. This is the Fenty Gloss Bomb Ice, $24. Huda Beauty just came out with an ice lip gloss and a heat lip gloss, but Fenty already has a heat lip gloss, so now they have the ice one, and it is really cute. It is $24. I would love to see somebody do a video comparing them. I, I don't think I want to do that. I I don't want to do that, but I hope someone else does it. Next up, the Gucci Luminous Matte Beauty Blush, $49 each. Luminous Matte. What is happening? I don't know. I don't know. Let's just go with it. $49, six shades, really cute packaging, but Luminous Matte, I don't get it. Maybe it just means like kind of like satin. I don't know. Now on to our second Disney collab. We have the One Size and Disney Fantasia collection. This is the Bit of Magic Highlighter, $36. Super cute there. The face and eye palette, $49. Honestly, like this reminds me of a Hot Topic palette. I hate to say it, but it really does. I like the shades he chose though. The shades are beautiful. I just, I'm not a big fan of the setup. I bet the formula is good though. Along with that, there's a dual ended lip snatcher, $28. There's a red side and a clear side. The Disney branded Point Made liner pen in black, that's 19 bucks. The versatile complexion brush for $34 and the ultimate Mickey Puff for $16. It is the year of the skin tint. So <laughs> this week we do have Iconic London coming out with their own skin tint. This is the Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint, $32, 18 shades. Uh, it does look like a really nice gradient, especially for a skin tint. Sometimes they like skimp on the shades because it's relatively sheer, but it's nice that they came out with a really nice gradient. They say it's a light coverage, delivers a blurred and flawless satin matte second skin, long wearing finish for up to 12 hours. And then they also released the Underglow Blurring Primer, $29 for so many brands coming out with these, you know, Hollywood Flawless Filter kinds of products, but that's what's on trend right now, so gotta go with the trends. Guerlain has some new eyeshadow palettes. There's three different colorways here. They're $85 each. I have a question for you. I noticed the sponge applicators and I'm wondering if you're spending $85 for an eyeshadow palette, are you using a sponge applicator? Is that a thing? You would think they would at least put like a little nice brush in there or something for $85. And the only product listed as coming soon this week is from NARS. It is the Rising Star Cheek Palette, $60. They say it is a holiday palette featuring NARS's award-winning blush in six limited edition shades designed for all skin tones. Looks really pretty. Moving over to Ulta, just a few things. We have the About Face Cheek Freak Blush Balms. Those are now at Ulta. They released a couple of weeks ago. $18, six shades there. I really need to buy one of these because they look gorgeous. This Spectrum collection is so cute. It's a collaboration with Winnie the Pooh. There's the six-piece honey brush set, the Eeyore five-piece brush set, the Runny Honey Pot Bundle. There's six brushes and there's a cute little honey pot cup. It's really cute. The Blending Sponge Quad, a makeup bag, and this, 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 my friend, the Runny Honey Brush Soap in the cute little honey container. Oh my gosh, I kind of want that. <laughs> I kind of want that. Why? I don't know. I mean, you can always use more brush cleaner, but it's just, it's so freaking cute. And then finally, my friend, this one got me. And I think that it's a language thing. I think that maybe because it's Kiko Milano is an Italian brand, they just didn't get it. But this is the Bloomy collection. <laughs> they say on Instagram, I had to look it up. Like, why is this called Bloomy? When only some of the products are blue, like what? I don't get it. Apparently it's ocean themed. Like you can see in some of the products that there's like little waves in there and stuff. But the Bloomy collection, <laughs> I die, I die. Okay, anyway, 
in case you're looking to purchase it because you want bloomy i don't know they have the natural look lip and cheek in three brownish kinds of shades the sparkling eyeshadow in three shades the pearl blush in two shades the waving lip balm i really like the little marble in this that's really cute the 3d effect lip duo in two shades love the little wavy print there they carry on the wavy print to the complete look face palette the silky bronzer and then they also have a maxi eyeshadow palette prices range from $9.99 to $29.99. I feel like if I had a cosmetic brand and I wanted to sell in Italy, I should have someone that speaks Italian like run by the names of my collections just to make sure there's no like weird meanings or anything happening. You know what I mean? If you're selling in America knowing that there are a lot of people that speak English and, and French and Spanish and you know maybe run by those main languages to make sure that your collection isn't called blooming. Just saying. <laughs> All right, PR purchase product of the week. We're gonna focus, of course, on the Chippo Gray palette collaboration with Unearthly Cosmetics. It is so gorgeous. These pans are freaking huge. I'll swatch the shades that I wore today. So I used Victoria Falls uh, up in like crease. Oh my gosh, look at that. I use uh, 0407 all over my lid. And then on my lower lash line, I used Simba. So let's start there. Those are the main shades I used today. Oh my gosh, they swatch. They're, the mattes are a little chunky, but they're workable. And there we go. That's what we're working with. You just wanna dip gently with your brush, but the pigmentation is definitely there. When I swatch it, the purple shade looks more like a topper, but you can see on my eyes, like that's all that's on the majority of my lid is that purple shade. And it's definitely not a topper. Like it is, it's got some serious pigmentation to it. It's not quite as opaque as a foiled shadow, but it's more opaque than a topper, if that's the way I can describe it. The mattes just apply absolutely beautifully. I did feel like for me and my skill level, I needed some natural shades in order to like work with this. So I broke out my Persona Identity palette. If you watched Makeup and Reddit Rewind, you saw my rediscovery of this palette. Loving this so much. I used this shade here, Charming, on the outer corner along with Fearless to kind of solidify and kind of give some depth and dimension to the colors. And then what I did with the shade Charming, which was really fun that I haven't done in a while, is I used the Kathleen Light's new lip gloss from Lights Lacquer called Das Suspensive and I put Charming over top, and that's my lipstick today. It's just lip gloss and Charming. <laughs> I've wanted to match, and I felt like that helped me to match a little better. It's a little cheap for people that can't, you know, find the right colors. If you've never done that before, you're welcome. I couldn't find any great notable sales this week, so we're just moving straight into the Artist of the Week, and I'm introducing you to Jana. Oh my gosh, wait till you see her looks. Absolutely incredible. I don't even know how to describe this look. I, I don't know how. I do know that it is inspired by another artist that we featured here in What's Up In Makeup in the Artist Shout Out. His name is Brian MUA. He calls this look Venus. But focusing on her look, I love her use of shading here and how she just so seamlessly blends colors opposite the color wheel, yellow and purple. It's beautiful. I also love the long white wispy lashes that she chose and also the subtle contrast of the orange purple ombre lips. Just really, really beautiful there. She could have chosen to go yellow, but I love that she chose orange. Next up, oh my gosh, this look is just cool. <laughs> It's just so cool. The sharp, thin lines around her eyes and her mouth are just so well done. And I love that she enhanced them with a little bit of sparkle. But honestly, I think my favorite part are, is the random black splatters on her face. They aren't too much and they aren't prominent enough to stand out and they aren't like obviously freckles. I just really love it. I think it's just such a gorgeous look. For the third look, I just... With Jana, I think that one thing I really love about her account is that I'm just so confused. I'm confused all the time. So it like really makes me think about, is there a meaning behind this? And this one really, really caught me off guard. I think it's so cool. Like we've got this skull going on, but also there's butterflies flying out of the skull. So is it like life and death and beauty and colors and... I just love it. I just love the way that it makes me think. And I think that's what good art does is it makes you like wonder and think and decide what it means. And I just think that's so neat. And I love that Jana is able to pull that off so seamlessly. So I just followed her. I will leave her Instagram down below in case you would like to follow her too. 
And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, thank you as always to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you oh so very much. Our chat today is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Hopefully you can join us. We're going to be hanging out, talking about makeup, talking about the community. Hopefully you can join us. But if you can't because you've got stuff to do, totally get it. It's very easy to find on the replay, especially if you're subscribed to the channel. If you're subscribed, all you gotta do is go to your subscription feed. It's gonna be right there for you. But if you're not subscribed, you can also find it by going to my channel page and then clicking on my videos and then clicking on the video titled Live Chat. Thank you again so much for watching What's Been Makeup. I appreciate you. I know there are so many things you could choose to watch and I love that you chose What's Been Makeup. Thank you so much. I hope you loved it. If you loved it so much that you want to watch another episode and you missed last week, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode. It should be right there. But if you do have to go, because again, you got stuff to do, it's no problem. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. And I'd love to, and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye!